is the first episode of the Major Music Podcast for season two. Uh, I'd like to welcome the homie Dave, old man Yo. Sal. What's good, my brother? And uh, uh, by the way, also, his brother's joining us all the way from Japan. So yeah, yeah man, yeah. <clears throat> it's um, I'll make a long story short with that one. Um, I'm from Pontiac, Michigan, which is a just a jump outside of Detroit. Um, and you know, kind of things happen as a kid and I, I got on some kind of get the F out of Dodge sort of stuff. And I ended up in Japan. Um, and actually, man, I've been here for damn 25 years now. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Man, it, it just looks so like chill and, you know, like the scenery just looks beautiful. Yeah, man. You see, like pictures. Yeah. For sure, for sure. I mean, one thing that keeps me here is it, it's it's safe. You know what I mean? It's clean. People are are nice, you know, uh, on the surface, but you know, once you get to know them, they're 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 really cool. So yeah, man. I mean, compared to you know, everywhere you got something that's you know not so nice, no matter where you go. But um, I mean, when you compare those from you know where I grew up and you know like the the challenges my kids have and you know what I went through as a kid I mean it's it's night and day it's completely different so yeah it, it kind of keeps me here man so uh you know kind of with that being said uh I know how things are here for us I mean we're we're kind of we're moving backwards in terms of like COVID and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. and I know like 2020 for a lot of us was uh, kind of, it was locked down in a lot of places and some right. of us used that time to create a lot of, a lot of new music or just right, create right, content right. in general, content in general, excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, how, how, what has 2020 meant for you personally, you know, as far as being a music producer and just developing your craft? Right. Um, and, and I think, you know, I, I kind of wanted, that's what I was a little bit worried about. It maybe took so long to like connect with you. Cause I mean, I make music, but I don't, I don't really consider myself as like an artist, you know what I'm saying? I, I'll try to put some stuff out, but you know, it, it's, I'm not, I'm not making any spread off of it. You know what I mean? Um, so for me, it's still, I won't say it's something as light as a hobby, but it's definitely not a profession. You know what I'm saying? So, it, yeah, it's just, you know, an outlet for the creativity kind of, you know, to get out. But, yeah, man, 2020, you know, I think in Japan, it's been the same, maybe less extreme than, than back home in the U.S., you know, with the lockdowns and everything. Um, but, yeah, it, it's been great for me because you get, man, I spent like, you know, I think it was almost almost a full year basically working from home every day wow. you know and i mean you know you got your computer pc here and then i got you know the npc right here so I, i'm i'm going through records as i'm working so i mean the the productivity level with the music was like just crazy um and, and you know that that's uh, i got a couple things out now you know with some of my 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 homies and um, we were, that's what we were talking about because we recorded a podcast just a couple hours before this one. And I mean, that was, you know, I think like that period, because the same for them, they were at home, they had more time to focus on things. And um, yeah, we ended up, you know, we had like, I think almost five albums done in wow. a year, you know? So it was like a couple groups within the group, you know what I mean? And then some cats did some solo things. So yeah, it, it was good. I mean, in, in terms of being able to focus and put time and effort into the music. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I totally feel you on that because I, I was very similar um, as far as working from home most of last mm -hmm. year. And I can remember, man, you know, during my, my breaks, I mean, overall, I'd probably say I get about, I would get a full hour and then I will get mm -hmm. like two 15 minute breaks on the front and back end of that. Right. Right. Um, I used all my time to make beats and it mm -hmm. just, the productivity went through the roof. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, I did two albums last year as an artist. And then I did probably right. another, what, three or four beat takes. And okay. Uh, yeah, man, I definitely feel you on that. Uh, if 
and I say this a lot on a lot of the past episodes, if you're an artist or a producer and you really didn't get anything released or any work done in 2020, you're really slipping. Uh, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, so overall, how did you get into production? Like, did you start producing once you got to Japan or were you kind of in it when you were in the States? Um, I think, man, you know, as a kid growing up in, in where I grew up and I think, you know, we started coming up with the idea that, yeah, maybe we, we should rap too, you know, that'd be cool if we rapped. And that was, you know, eighth, ninth grade, which is, yeah, many, many moons ago. But um, we, and back in those days, it was like, nobody had equipment. You know what I'm saying? I mean, to buy an MPC back in those days, that was like $3,000. So, you know, that was completely out of the question. And a couple of the cats that I ran with, they would go to the studio like very, you know, like once every three, four months. So, I mean, access to like, you know, the the possibility or the equipment to the facility to make a beat, it just wasn't there. Yeah. Um, so we were just like, driving around, you know, as kids do, getting high, freestyling, you know, going out to the the CD store. And it wasn't even CDs then, it was tapes. You know, buying up all the singles that had instrumentals on them. Yeah. So that's kind of how I got started in in hip hop or music. And I think, um, yeah, when I first came to Japan in, in, man, I can't remember 96, I believe it was. Okay. Um, I got, I got a, I still got it here. It's right down, right over there. I got an MS1, Roland MS1 sampler. And then, yeah, it was like, all right, it's, it's now available. You know, it's whatever it was, $200, $300 to buy a sampler. Now I can actually make beats by myself. So it it was great, man, to start with that because, you know, the limitations that you got, well, I don't think it was like probably 10 seconds of sampling time and there's basically no sequence, uh, no sequencer. So I think I was actually kind of playing that almost like an instrument, you know what I mean? Um, So I got that and then I got a a four track, no, eight track um, tape, multi-track recorder and then just started from there, man. And it was like, and it wasn't, again, it was still wasn't, oh, yeah, we, we need to do something. We need to get a demo out. We need to put a tape out. It was just like, all right, you know, the the, the homies are doing what we love. We, we sit down and create together. And that's kind of how it was. Then, I mean, one of the main reasons I came to Japan anyways, my wife's Japanese. Um, so, you know, the, the typical story, boy meets girl, falls in love, you know, the rest is history kind of thing. Yeah. But um, I, I had kids like early on so the music took a back burner for you know the 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 following you know 20 years of my life um but yeah just recently probably three years ago no four years ago now um i got an interesting situation where i work in nagoya um in japan and my family lives in yokohama so that's I, i don't know it's um I take the bullet train, you know, so it's it's like a four hour train ride. So wow. I live here during the week and then I go home for the weekends, which means I've got all the evening time, all the morning time to myself. And I got all my little. So I thought, yeah, man, I'm a I'm gonna buy a, a few pieces of equipment and start making beats again. So I started off. I got the MPC 4000. Okay. <clears throat> and um then it was just like you know falling in love all over again you know what i'm saying um but now i use the the mpc live and and yeah that's 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 my um it's man you know i'm sure it's the same with you but you know if you go by you know two days go by and you haven't done anything with music you start getting the the twitches you know it's like damn i need to do something so yeah that's kind of how it is yeah yeah man i mean you you spoke a lot a lot of stuff uh in terms of i i used to use the uh 2000 excel okay i got one of those too <laughs> yeah man I, I used to love it and uh after a while up until last year that's when i got back into like the mpc one uh okay i yeah. had to sell my mpc 2000 i got upset about that 
Yeah. yeah. And I mean, other than that, you, you're absolutely right. I can remember because you speak around like 96. Um, mm-hmm. That's when I was, I guess you can say I kind of wanted to get into music around that time, but I never mm-hmm. actually did it until after I graduated high school because I was in 96, I was like a freshman. Then I got out okay. in 2000. And then uh, probably maybe a year or two after that, I, I started using this uh, Magic Music Studio program. Right, right, right. Computer, and then I got into like threes and three. And then uh, that's when I got to the MTC uh, around 07, 08. And mm-hmm. uh, it was my first time really experiencing hardware. Um, okay, now, yeah, yeah. Do you just strictly use hardware now or do you uh, kind of go into so Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, and that's kind of a little bit connected with the old man sour thing. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not against anything. Like you, you shouldn't be using the computer. You know, I'm, I'm nowhere in that camp. But um, yeah, man, I'm strictly hardware. One thing I've kind of like, I think transitioned or, or kind of mixed up the old and the new is recently. I've been like digital digging. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like trying to find things online because. Yeah, I mean, I, I bought a little bit of a collection of records when I've, when, as I'm out here by myself, and um, I know my wife ain't gonna be very happy when I'm carrying these big cases of records back home. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, but yeah, I, I'm basically strictly, strictly standalone with the okay. NPC. You know? Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, man, that's that's what's up. I kind of started off, of course, on the software side, but like, mm-hmm. I think a lot of guys go through years of production without ever going to the hardware side. And I right, recommend right. to like any young producer, try it out. You know, you never know if you like it or not. Right, right, right. A lot of those guys, you know, nothing wrong with using like FL Studio or anything like that. Like I use, mm. if I don't use MPC, I use Machine or Logic, sometimes Reason. Um, right, right. But I kind of revolve in, in, in between all of those different things. Right, right, right. You and I met, we met through YouTube. Um, yeah, yeah. How important is it for producers to have some sort of presence like on YouTube in terms of creating content and just putting out their beat? Um, man, uh, to be honest, I, I, I'm, I'm not at any level to like give a, a, a valid answer to that one, you know what I'm saying? But okay. um, I mean, I think from a, 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 the, the, per, the availability, um, you know, to have yourself available basically on any of the platforms that you can. Um, Because I think, yeah, you're one good example, but I've connected with a lot of cats just because I uploaded something on YouTube or I was on YouTube watching stuff and, and, you know, connected with cats like yourself. So I think, yeah, man, from from kind of a network capability perspective, yeah, it's definitely important to be up there. But yeah. at the same time, man, I, I tried my, um, you know, series of, you know, taping myself, making a beat. And, and you know, I, I did like an opening of the, the blue microphone and, you know, I got like 30 views. I was like, man, all right, that's, that's cool. I'm, I'm over that. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a little uh, up and down, you know, when it comes to a lot of that stuff. And, yeah. you know, I, I always say like, I'm, I definitely like as another creator, I like what you're doing and mm. you know some guys they don't even i mean they're great they do great work but they don't put their work out there right right and right. um that's one of the things that i kind of stress is at least give yourself a shot you know because also with that kind of being said different people got like different paths they want to go some people you know kind of mm. like you were saying not necessarily a profession but not necessarily just a hobby kind of right. in between but then some people, you know, they that might be their lifeblood is creating content. So I can right, right, get it right. from both sides. But I also feel like, you know, if you're trying to like sell beats or network even with other artists, I know other guys that they don't sell beats, but they just like to work on projects with other artists they meet online. And that's kind of right. how they build their brands. That's that's cool as well. But right. I just advise, you know, a lot of producers to really get themselves out there in terms of that. For sure. For sure. And I mean, that that's one reason I, I, I reached out to you as well, because I I mean, like, I really admire your consistency. You know what I'm saying? 
Cause that's one thing I, and I did, I, I won't say like I lost energy for it, but you know, you, you start to make a, a video and then you, you know, probably way better than I do, but I mean like to edit a video and get it, you know, in the quality that you think it should be, it takes a lot of time. Right. And then you put it out there and it's like, Oh, like I said, damn, I got 30 views on that in like three months, mm, I, you know, um, but I, I really wanted to do like the, the instructional videos and stuff until I went on and found that, man, there's like 10,000 people doing this already. Then I was like, all right, then it's really, it's kind of difficult to be unique when there's already that many people doing yeah. it. You know what yeah, I mean? man, that's the biggest part too, um, because. I don't want to make it seem like, oh, I'm biting this dude video, I'm biting that dude video. Mm -hmm. um, but kind of what I make it a point to do is maybe be one of the first people out there with some some sort of information. Right. Um, but the unique part about that is, man, it's like I've been on YouTube since probably about like 09. And the, thing, the th biggest thing is like a lot of guys, um, I don't know if you heard, of uh, DJ Ab McCree. Yeah, 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 yeah. I watched he, a couple um, of his, yeah. He was telling, and I'm, I don't want to get it wrong, so I, I'm uh, just kind of paraphrasing, but mm -hmm. he was kind of speaking on his journey, and he, you know, to your word, he was showing some videos that he had from like 07, 08 that had like mm -hmm. 50 views, 100 right, views. Right, right, and right. And then he kind of showed over the years, uh, how his content kind of evolved to what it is now. And he'll right. throw up a video and have maybe like three, 4,000 views in a day or so. And it's, it's, right, right. it's kind of crazy how that works. So it's like, and I've had videos myself where it's kind of like I've uploaded an MPC video on how to sample or something. And mm -hmm. That video got like 9,000 views from a wow. year ago. But then right, I might right. upload, make an MC, MPC beat. And I might get 30, 40 views. It's crazy, yeah, man. Yeah. It's just, yeah. uh, I don't know. I guess the timing of it, for one thing, and a lot yeah. of it also has to do with the YouTube algorithm. Yeah, exactly, man. That's that black box that nobody knows how it works. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, you mentioned between, at the beginning of the show, you mentioned that you're kind of getting into the podcasting thing. And yeah. um, I know, like, what I wanted to do when I got into this for example, is I wanted to really create another platform for producers to come on and maybe mm -hmm. like sound sound designers and right, app right, developers, right. but really for us to talk about our journey, maybe you right. got projects that you want to plug in um, and just talk about issues that are going on in our community. What's, right. what's kind of your motivation behind doing your podcast? Um, I think, you know, it was almost like a, maybe every other week thing where we would get online. And, and that's the thing with the, the cats that I'm working with. One dude is actually in Dallas. Um, another cat's in Seattle, I believe. So we're all spread out, you know, uh, you know, two different continents. There's three different time zones that we got to work with. So, I mean, it's tricky to kind of really connect with each other like this, where we can actually have a conversation, but we do it like, um, probably once every month, if that, but then we were doing that. And then it, it, it kind of got to the point where it's like, you know what, man, we should record these yeah. because just like you said now, I mean, some of it is a bit, you know, educational, but then some of it is it's actually, I mean, cause I love to listen to cats like my age, your age, you're probably a little bit younger than me, but, um, you know, just to chop it up about the good old days and, you know, how did you get into the music and stuff? So that's kind of how it started. And and then, you know, looking at everything, it's like, yeah, if you want to grow your, your music, it's good if you have a podcast because then you can use that as a platform to, you know, promote the music even further. So, yeah, it was, it was a little bit of both of those put together. Um, and I think we did the first one and it, it was like, yeah, man. Because for me, I, I treat because I, I record everything and then I do all the editing afterwards. But it, it, for me, like from a creative point of view, it was great because it was almost like making a song. 
Because I would go in and, you know, throw in an echo here and there. And then, you know, if we talk about ghetto boys, then I'll put a little bit of like, my mind's playing tricks on me, come up in a little bit of the background, you know. So, it, yeah, that it's it's fun. I mean, we haven't done nothing, but we recorded, I think, two or three so far. But yeah, man, it's exciting. And it's a different avenue for the creativity. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. And you're right. It's um what I've enjoyed the most about it is a lot of things that you said. It's just connecting with other people mm -hmm. about stuff that, I mean, technically speaking, we all do it in a comment section uh, almost every other day. Right. Uh, we might do it on YouTube, but we do it in passing. And like we kind of been chopping it up ourselves over the last year. And it's kind of cool to really, you know, have this conversation. I even had somebody from Australia in one time right right um, on a podcast and yeah i seen that the, the girl to, yeah see how <clears throat> um just music is in different places which we'll kind of get into as well because I, I do want to kind of know how the music scene is where you are right but um even that just how everybody's journey has kind of been different everybody kind of has their preference like yours is hard where i met right, people right. that uh love to produce on the ipad all they do is produce yeah yeah I met some yeah. people that are, you know, on a computer. So it's right. kind of like, at the end of the day, we're all still making music, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's the cool part about it. Exactly. So yeah. how is the music scene where you are? I mean, it, it's, I think with a lot of things, um, and regardless of the, the genre of, of music, um, in Japan, you have like, I wouldn't necessarily call them small pockets, but you have like your hardcore fans of, you know, like classic rock or, you know, uh, punk rock and hip hop. So, I mean, the the people that are into it are into it. Okay. And, and one thing in, in Japan is, is interesting is <clears throat> if they do something, they do it 300%. You know what I mean? There's not much of, I'll just try it a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, like the real hardcore, you know, hip hop heads, they're, they're still there and they listen to what we listen to. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't even know if we call it hip hop, you know, by, by again, old man sour, there's a lot of stuff that's out now that I wouldn't even call hip hop, but you know what I mean? But um, I mean, it rap is as big as, as big here as it is back home you know what i'm saying so it's on tv all the time there's tons of japanese rappers um so yeah it, it's big it's huge it's huge yeah it, it just um that's also another thing when i look at like or when i hear rather people that are involved in hip-hop music like in japan then mm -hmm. i also know like a lot of guys speak from uh london uh yeah, yeah. hip-hop is they they kind of like that old school sound, uh, right, right. Going over there, and that's that's a lot better than, as you kind of alluded to, some of the music that's being made out here. Right, right. One of the things I, I liked about your style in general is it reminded me about a lot of the music that I grew up on, um, right, like right. Thanks, Brand man. Nubian, Tribe Called Quest, right. uh, Jay Dilla, you know, to name a few. Right. Um, has that old school hip hop sound. Um, who are some of your influences as far as being a producer? Um, man, yeah. Uh, first, thanks for that, man. It's it's good to hear that we we remind some people of some of the the people that we actually like. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, influence, man. I think of of course Tribe Called Quest. You know, all the Preem. I think was a, a big like trying to figure out how he did things back in the day was a big influence. Dilla for sure. I mean, <clears throat> being from Detroit, I think we were kind of in maybe the same areas from time to time. And I remember back in the day when it was like, yeah, yo, he, he got a deal. He's working with Q-Tip now and you know, he sold Busta a beat for $5,000. But yeah, I mean, that that style, that that sound for sure was a big influence um doom for sure that that was you know and when what was the other dude um mad lib you know when they yeah, did j lib yeah. you know so i mean i think and maybe that's a little bit like with how i do my stuff i don't get all like scientific with it you know what i'm saying 
you know, there, there's a lot of people that can tell you, yeah, okay, on every fourth whatever bar, I put a crescendo on my hi-hat or, you know, I do this and that. Yeah. I mean, I, again, you know, basically hardware. So I, I sample pretty much everything. Um, and I like to just let the sample do the work. You know what I'm saying? Throw a, a few, you know, drum parts here and there that, that will highlight it and make it sound a little bit better. But I mean, that's what I like with Doom and, and Mad Lib, you know, because basically they they let, they, you know, the sample does all the work mostly, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's kind of the, the influences. And I mean, the list goes on forever for sure. But uh, yeah, man, those man, are some man, of the big ones. Mad Lib has had, uh, Probably one of the best two years, like working with Freddie Gibbs. Well, he's been working oh, man. longer than that, but uh, them two, man, they really put out some heat yeah. in recent years. And uh, yeah, man, shout out to Doom. Rest in peace, Doom. Yeah, rest in peace, man. And uh, as far as like your own music, uh, you have anything out there right now or anything you're working on? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We have, um, so there's kind of two groups that uh, we're working, I'm working with now. One is called Damco, D-A-M-K-O. Um, that's on all of the, the the streaming platforms. So if you just search for Damco Joints, Volume 1 or Volume 2, there's two volumes out for that. The other group is Cold with a K, K-O-L-D. So these are all really brilliant ideas to use our initials for the names of the group. So <laughs> that's where the names come from, but cold haystack needle part one, we, we got out right now. Um, part two is coming soon, but kind of in the works stuff is, is, yeah, we're just, again, man, not really putting in or, or making music specifically for this album or, you know, this project, but we're just stacking tracks now. And um, yeah, you know, basically the way we've been doing it for the last year or so is we get a good 16, 17 ready and then we'll split it up and make, you know, part one, part two okay. and release them at different times. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah that, that's that's cool. I mean, I kind of do something similar in a similar way. Mm -hmm. I've learned to start putting up shorter projects, maybe five okay. to seven tracks. Right, okay. right. I had to get myself out of the mindset because my albums that I've recorded also in the past, I recorded the albums all the way having like 16 tracks. Right, right, right. And these days I feel like people attention spans kind of, you know, a lot oh, yeah. less than it used to be years ago. So For I sure. figured putting out shorter projects and I might stack some other songs that I'll put out at a later time and just kind of right. add to those as I go along. And that's right, kind of how right. I'll put out my projects as well. So right, right. any questions you mentioned earlier, you wanted to talk, to, you wanted to ask me about the podcast, uh, any questions mm -hmm. you had in regards to that? Yeah. I mean, like uh, not really like super technical stuff, but I was going to just like simply, you know, how much editing do you do? like with the podcast, like after you record it? It varies because some of them, I feel like the conversation may go fluid, you know, in terms mm -hmm. of like not to say that it goes off the rail or anything, but sometimes, you know, maybe little stutter parts. Right, right. And little parts where there's a lot of ums and ahs. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. I cut those out um, in right. between. And I would probably say out of a full show, like, I don't know, right now we've been going a little over 30 minutes. But let's just say we stop now. I probably would take my guess would probably be about five minutes or so out because I think a lot right, of the conversation right. went smooth. But I've I've had them, especially when I first started and had to kind of find my pace and you mm -hmm. know it's a better way to do the show. Um, I can remember, you know, 45 minutes or an hour show was I would end up doing at least 10 to 15 edits on it. And okay. what I kind of do is uh Anytime, I would say on a normal basis, I usually go through the show at least twice with edits. Mm -hmm. First time I'll take out those sounds like I was saying, and then a second time, it's kind of like uh, to overlook any mistakes that might have been made along the way. Right, right, right. I, sometimes I may chop something up and say I'm going to come back to a part later and I forget to come back to it. 
right, so, right, um, right. Just to kind of cut those out. But yeah, I would say on average, I could probably edit like in if I really needed to, I could probably have it out in about three days. Okay, okay. But uh, yeah, right. I would work and just the time I have in between because I'm also doing some other stuff. I'll probably right. say um, that can that could probably vary, you know, a lot of the times. Um, right, right. Even the other content that I do, because having to create the content, edit, kind of like you were talking about earlier, there are some times I had to take a break from that. Oh man, because it was just like every right. day I had to edit something. Right, right, right. That that's that that was probably my other question then because I I was just gonna ask damn man how you how you stay so consistent because I I got there's not many cats that I turn that notification thingy on for but I got it on for you and it's like damn every day I'm getting something that say oh D dots doing this D, it's like how man plus you I gather you have a, a kind of normal nine to five right yeah yeah i do have a man uh, how you how you doing all this <laughs> um i kind of <laughs> appreciate it man uh, i kind of build it around my schedule man and, and you know most mm-hmm. weeks i'm pretty lucky um in terms of getting to getting to do some content in the evening as well as on my off days you know i get two four days off a week so right uh my routine is kind of just i mean on those off days in the afternoon, um, I may stop doing like regular things in terms of like gym and going grocery shopping and other right, things. Right, right, right. Um, and I try to have that done by at least noon, one o'clock. That way okay. I have the rest of the day to create. And uh, also utilizing my time at work because I might shoot something mm-hmm. on one of those days. Like I might shoot something today and I'll use my breaks at work to do a lot of my editing. And okay. I may not okay. get through the full project while I'm there, but if I can get through most of it to to when right, I right. get home, I can just finish touching it up and have it uploaded. But like I also like to like kind of whenever I get back, because I've taken about a month and a half off from releasing content every week okay. or, or daily. But um what I'm gonna kind of get back to is stacking shows and stacking a lot of the content and then right. like i'm gonna just start releasing what i have that way i'm kind of ahead of schedule um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. even like because i was and i would just get this out of there but i had covid recently i had COVID okay like okay three, three weeks ago in fact um Damn. i just got over it and, okay that's um, good though good you got over it and uh around that time I was really wanting to start doing shows and like you and you hit me up ironically I was kind of starting to get you know get feelers out there for people that want to be on the show and right, um, right. I thought you know my plans had kind of got wrecked and I, in that case I wish I had some shows stacked but right. you know, just in case anything else happens or you know you never know what life throws at you for sure for and sure you, that way you can kind of keep the show going with premieres and a lot of content that's already pre-scheduled. Also, right, right. Uh, I, I the beats that I make because I, I put them on Beat Stars a lot of the times. So okay. I may have a week where there's content like we're doing now. There's content around maybe a tutorial, or new something that's new in the production world. Right. And, um, I may take like in between those things. I'm still making beats you know, off of camera. So I may take those, track mm-hmm. them out, upload them to BeatStars and upload them to YouTube. And that's another form of content right there. So it's just right, kind, of, right. kind of thinking about not only catering to the producers that follow me, but also the artists too. Right, 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 right. Damn, that's, that's yeah, man. <clears throat> so basically making time to do, you know, what, what you need to do or hopefully is, you know, what you want to do, right? Yeah, yeah. And that, that's the yeah. other side to it, uh, you know, because, like a lot of people like you, even people that know me, like have known me for years, mm-hmm. they know like I like doing other things. Like I'm big into fitness, I'm big into sports, I'm big right. into like uh, just entertainment. I got a girlfriend, mm-hmm. uh, right. I got family I got to spend time with and juggling all those things. Uh, yeah. I don't really, outside of those things, it's pretty much just work, you know, it's like, I got to yeah, edit yeah. this video to upload to YouTube for tomorrow and right, just thinking right. ahead and scheduling because 
back in my day though, like I would say when I was in my twenties or early thirties, so I'm, I'm 39 now, I'll be 40 mm. later this year. But like um, oh, better get ready for that 40, bro. That poor old man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I there's no way I probably could have done this type of work 10, 15 mm-hmm. years ago because I was always out in the clubs, I was always oh, out yeah. doing shows. Um and since then it's kind of slowed down and I just wanted to uh I wanted to find another way really to get my brain. You, you mentioned it earlier about about um how you can use a podcast to kind of promote some of your work as a producer right, or right. artist. And right. that's also another way I, I look at it too, because I may gain followers from other people's uh network right, right, right. and aim of listening to my music. So you know it kind right. of kind of all comes together. Where can they follow you online? Um man, see that that's the only thing I didn't put in my notes. Hold up, let me see. <laughs> there you go, man. I mean, I'm I'm on Instagram. Um so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me do this. All right. And this is probably what I didn't plan ahead for. So my my Instagram is Dave.melv old man sour all one word. so if, if you can find it cool if you can it's all right um yeah but yeah i, I think that's basically the, the main social media that i use i think yeah. we got a twitter or something like that but it's, it's mainly um instagram yeah yeah man that, that's where my following is mostly too and i, I use twitter too but twitter i'm mainly mainly talking about sports and it's a it's a okay. crazy environment man once those trolls start getting out man oh yeah 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 <laughs> um, i mean instagram is bad enough you know as soon as you post something and, and i i kind of feel sorry for the cats that like engage with these like bots that are like, oh this is so fire you should promote on such and such record label it's like yeah okay <laughs> I was, nah, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Sometimes how, how petty I am. Um, I'll sometimes just talk shit to them, just like just to oh, see yeah, somebody me, respond. Yeah, yeah, me too, me too. <laughs> and I mean, I've had actually a few cats that hit me up. Was like, dude, the only reason I follow you is because I love how you be getting at them stupid people that comment on your stuff. <laughs> yeah. Man, yeah. They, they be trying their hardest, man, and it's just like. Bro, I can't believe some people be falling for this, man. I know, I know, I know. But I mean, again, that that's you know the the, and I think you're you're probably closer into the the whole business side of it for sure. Um, but I mean, that is it's just a different business environment completely today. Yeah, man. you know, you, you could buy a. a whatever a plug-in for your app that will automatically like something by whatever ids you put in or something that will automatically reply to an email it's like man right. where, where yeah. the people at you know what i mean man i'm chill with a lot of them things uh, i had another account which i'm, I'm kind of still pissed off about mm. but uh it that account had about three almost four thousand people okay uh, following me and um I had that account probably since maybe like 2010, maybe a little after that. But um, they closed Instagram, closed my account years ago, yeah. uh, two years ago, and uh, never gave me a reason why, man. And Damn. Ever since then, that's when I kind of backed away from using those types of like, like uh, apps to auto post and things like that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah man. Because uh, I don't know, I don't. Know. It could have been that. Could have been something else. You know? Right, right, right. As far as like one of the questions I ask every guest. So if you had three of your favorite rappers, like we can mm-hmm. go back as long as hip hop has existed. If right. You had three of your favorite rappers, and they said you can produce a record for them. Or not damn a record. Let's say it's an EP. You can produce a record from your three favorite rappers. Who would that be? Ooh. Um. I don't, man, let me just give me one, one, one second to think about that. Cause my thing is, you know, I don't do like the top five, top 10 thing. Cause my top five this week is going to be different next week. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, being from Detroit, I mean, M for sure. It would be, and 
it's maybe a little bit kind of, you know, he's he's a hometown boy for us. So I don't like all of his stuff. And he's not like what, a, you know, from a, a content wise, you know, what he says is like brilliant for sure. But yeah, it'd be dope to work with him on something. Um, Royce the five nine for sure would be someone that would be dope to get in the studio yeah. and make some tracks yeah, for. Okay. Yeah. Um, other than that, man, I man, you know, like to do something with Q Tip, you know, yeah, to, to be in a session yeah. with him, I think would be a, an amazing dream come true too, yeah, man. For us and Q Tip, I like that, man. That's definitely a great combination, man. Yeah. Hey trying to do it man yeah you know? yeah man <laughs> I, I was what, what was that there was one I, I don't get into the like beat competition thingies but there was one a while back i think it was like um track lib was doing like yeah. a beat competition and if you win you get to have a, a studio session with royce the five oh, nine yeah, yeah that wasn't I was like damn man i should have actually i should have joined that but i man. mean uh i made a joint actually um that was what Last year, or, or it might have been close to about a year ago, because uh, yeah. I did a remix of that joint he had with Ti. Uh, okay, right, yeah. right. And uh, I, I had sent it in, didn't get selected, but no, that was right. on. Uh, it wasn't track lit. I know the one you're talking about, but it was on Beat Stars. They had a thing with okay they had a contest okay. with Royce the Five Nine as well, and. Uh, they gave you the acapella and you just have to build instrumental around it. Okay, right. Uh, yeah, man. I wouldn't mind. Just I, there's actually a guy out here. Uh, his name is Jay Rhodes, but uh, he produced yeah, I've heard, I've heard some records for uh, Royce the Five Nine. So yeah, I, he's a he's a pretty dope producer, and I know he's done some work like with uh, Talib Kweli as well. So. Okay. Look, man, it was uh, definitely a pleasure, you know, having you on the show. And uh, what I always like to tell every guest, man, definitely if you want to get back on, I'll let you boy. Let me know. For sure, for know, sure, man. We'll make it happen. Uh, you got nah, man. shout outs or anything? Um, Yeah, I mean, just, to, you know, um, the fam, the, the homies, I'm, I'm doing stuff. So cold, damn cold. So my man, KO Style, my man, L. Um, there's a, a lot of other cats that we've been working with. So yeah, my man, Ray Doc, he's always out there, but yeah, man, I was, I was just gonna say, yeah, no, nah, the, the mad appreciation your way as well for having me on, man. It was dope it. learning as well, but also, I mean, this was fun. This was yeah, real man, fun. It's a great conversation and, you know, I enjoyed it as well, man. And, um, yeah, I'm a big fan of what you do, man, too. So you know, thank I like you, man. Thank you. And, uh, I want you to keep representing, man, because, uh, you know, we need more people. Kind of like you were saying, man, I don't want to be the dead horse, but uh, a lot of these young guys don't really know, like, yeah. you know, you know, the hip-hop that came before what we have right now. Right, right. You know, I, I'm very appreciative of that sound that a lot of people are still putting it out there, man. Right, right, right. Word up, man. Word up, man. This has been another edition of the Major Music Podcast. Your boy D. Dot with Old Man Sour, Dave. Word. And uh, yeah, man, this has been another episode. Peace. Major Music. <laughs>